going on, everyone? My name is Jamon McKinney, or you can just call me Juice, because that is my nickname. Today, I am presenting to you guys the top 10 biggest storylines that interest me the most regarding the 2020 NBA bubble slash 2020 NBA playoffs. Once the NBA restarts, these are the 10 biggest storylines that interest me the most. And by the way, if you are watching on YouTube or you follow me on social media, be sure to hit me up in the comment section or at me on Twitter or Instagram telling me what storylines you are most interested, interested to follow during the 2020 NBA bubble slash playoffs. Love to know what is on you guys' mind. But without further ado, let's get right to it. The biggest storyline that I am most interested to follow once the NBA restarts is who goes farther in the playoffs. LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers or Kawhi Leonard and the Los Angeles Clippers. My money is on the Clippers. I believe the Clippers are just a more well-rounded and more complete team. I believe they're better defensively. I believe they're a much deeper team. I believe they have a better coach. And ultimately, I said it in the offseason, I think that Kawhi Leonard might be ready to overtake LeBron James as being the best player in basketball. I said in the offseason, if I were to choose between the two, I would take Kawhi Leonard to try to win a championship this year over LeBron James. Now, Kevin Durant is hurt, so he's not in the conversation at the moment for best player in the world. But in these NBA playoffs, I truly firmly believe if Kawhi Leonard and LeBron James face off, Kawhi Leonard is going to take LeBron, he's going to overtake LeBron James in the NBA hierarchy as arguably the best player in the sport. Um, I just, I think LeBron James is great. He's, he's all time great. But I just don't believe in his team. And I think the Kawhi Leonard is going to be ready for the smoke from LeBron James come playoff time. Now, as far as the Lakers go, who's going to step up for this team? Is it going to be Kyle Kuzma? Is it going to be KCP? Or is it going to be Alex Caruso? Because Avery Bradley's not playing. And Rajon Rondo, while he is going to come back for the, for the playoffs at some point, how healthy is he going to be once he gets back on the court? We know LeBron James and Anthony Davis are great, but they need some support. Where will they get it? I don't quite know. Maybe Danny Green steps up once again. I am interested. I am very interested to see where the support comes from the Lakers and who goes further in the playoffs between the Clippers and Lakers. We shall see. I am also interested to see how this new format works during the NBA playoffs. There's not going to be any fans. Um, and ultimately, guys are coming back from a three month layoff. Are guys in shape? Are these teams still well equipped? to get their chemistry down in time before the playoffs start. Listen, there's been some rumors and some little chit chatter that Chris Middleton had not picked up a basketball for over three months. Same with Pascal Siakam, who it, there are reports that he may have not been, been working as much during this, this quarantine period. Giannis Antetokounmpo said that he sucked in his first practice back with the team. I think that teams are going to get exposed we're going to find out who's really been working and who's really got their act together. I think teams like Denver and Philadelphia, two teams that really rely on home court advantage to win games, are really going to struggle due to the fact that there are not going to be any fans in the stands and due to the fact that you are playing on a neutral court. That matters because if you're on a neutral site with no fans, usually the best team's going to win. And Philadelphia, Denver, and some of these teams like even Utah, I think they're gonna get. I think they're gonna get exposed. Up next, I want to see how far the Houston Rockets can go in the NBA playoffs. By the way, if there was one team that I am truly rooting for in these playoffs, besides my Brooklyn Nets, it would be the Houston Rockets, due to the fact that I root so hard for James Harden and Russell Westbrook. These are two former league MVPs. I don't think get enough credit for how good and how truly talented they are as NBA players due to the fact that they don't have a championship. You know, Russell Westbrook, ever since Kevin Durant, you know, left him, 
He, he has not gotten out the first round. And we know James Harden, while he has gotten to a couple conference finals, you know, as the number one option on a team, he hasn't quite been there in the biggest moments in the playoffs. And I think that he kind of gets unfairly criticized as a player due to those things. So I hope that Russell Westbrook and James Harden one day pull through and win a championship. I do believe Houston is arguably the third best team in basketball behind the Clippers and Lakers. I believe this team has a lot of star power. I believe they are very explosive offensively. They have some they have some very good veteran players. And not to mention, you give James Harden and Russell Westbrook three months of extra rest to rejuvenate, these guys at times look worn down in the playoffs. And I think that has attributed due to the fact that they have, you know, struggled and flamed out in the playoffs in the past due to the fact that they've kind of been worn down. It's looked that way. They look tired in the playoffs at times. Now you give them the three-month rest period, will they take off and actually prove all the haters wrong? We shall see. I want to see how the small ball lineup works, and I want to see if Russell Westbrook can get reincorporated with this team fast enough before the playoffs actually starts due to the fact that he sort of has a little um, sickness, uh, quote-unquote, um, little virus uh, right there, but either way, um, yeah. I'm very interested interested to see how Houston looks in these playoffs because this team could easily get, get bounced in the first round or this team could actually easy win, easily win the championship. Up next, I want to see how Luka Doncic performs in these playoffs. I don't have a whole lot of expectations for his team overall as far as winning games in the playoffs simply because I don't think Dallas is quite equipped to compete with teams like the Lakers and the Clippers, etc., because they're not good enough defensively. But I want to see how Luka Doncic plays in the playoffs. This is a guy that I'm very high on. I've said in the past that I think Luka Doncic can become a top 10 player of all time. I think by the time Luka Doncic retires from the NBA, he's going to have 30,000 career points, and he will at least win one regular season MVP and at least one NBA Finals MVP. This guy is putting up 29 points per game, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists in his second season, and he's only 21 years old. I believe Luka Doncic is special. There are certain players that fold under pressure in the playoffs, that stay the same under pressure in the playoffs, and then there are some that elevate under pressure in the playoffs. I believe Luka Doncic has a chance to be a guy that elevates under pressure in the playoffs. We shall see. I got my eyes on the Milwaukee Bucks. A team that I'm just not quite sold on. I'm really not. I think this team can make the finals. But they have the best record in basketball. Um, they've got the reigning MVP in Giannis, Giannis Antetokounmpo. And honestly, I, I think the Greek Freak is the NBA MVP this year too. Um, I, didn't, I didn't give him the vote last year. For MVP, I thought that James Harden deserved the, deserved the MVP last year, but Giannis could very well win Defensive Player of the Year and MVP this year as well by the end of the season. But see, we don't judge all-time great players based on just MVPs and individual accolades in the regular season. We judge them on their postseason success. And Giannis can only get so high on the all-time NBA hierarchy if he doesn't win a championship. So, he's got to start putting... He's got to put up a Shep in these playoffs. You know, he kind of got exposed last year in the Commerce Finals by Kawhi Leonard. Is Giannis ready for the big moments? Is he going to fold under pressure? Or is he going to get better under pressure? Is Chris Middleton ready to be the guy that steps up and makes big shots down the stretch? Is Giannis' supporting cast good enough to win him a championship? Personally, I don't think it is. But we're going to find out. Also, I want to see who gets that final playoff spot out West. Is it going to be the Memphis Grizzlies, led by John Morant? Is it going to be Damian Lillard's Portland Trailblazers, who are going to get a very healthy squad back and fully ready to go once the playoffs or, or once the NBA bubble rolls back around? But Portland, Portland is finally healthy. They're, they're a pretty good team when healthy, in my opinion. Um... Is it going to be Zion Williamson and the New Orleans Pelicans getting that final playoff spot? Or could it be a team like the Kings? Honestly, 
I would probably lean toward the Pelicans. I think that they're a very good, well-constructed team. They have a very easy schedule down the stretch. And when Zion Williamson has played for the team, he's made a humongous difference in their win-loss record. So, if I were to bet money, I'd probably say that the, that the Pelicans are the final team that makes it in if Zion Williamson is healthy and ready to go. But we shall see. I want to see what the Philadelphia 76ers look like. The most overrated team in the NBA. I'm not sold on the Sixers. I'm not. I think this team is going to lose in the first round. I do. I, I just don't see it. This team is 21st in the NBA in points per game. The Thunder. The Grizzlies. The Brooklyn Nets. Who've dealt with a lot of injuries all year. Average more points per game than this team. I don't believe in Brett Brown as the head coach. They don't have a lot of great shooters. This team is 10 and 24 on the road. You mean to tell me they're going to win games on a neutral site without a home court and without fans? I think you're delusional. I just don't see it. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, they don't fit well together. With They, they don't fit well together. I don't think they're a great fit. Can Philadelphia prove me wrong? I don't think so, but maybe they can. We shall see. I think Philadelphia is the most overrated team in basketball, and I believe that's going to be proven true in the playoffs. The Miami Heat. Everyone's talking about the Bucks, the, the Celtics, the Raptors, the Sixers, as far as these Eastern Conference teams go. No one's talking about Miami. Miami has a lot of great shooters on their team. Duncan Robinson, Tyler Harrell, Kendrick Nunn. You got Jimmy Butler, who's having a great season. Bam out of Bayou is a beast down low. Not to mention, you got two good veteran players in Jay Crowder and Andre Godala. I'm sorry, but Miami is not going to be a pushover. I don't think that Miami is going to make a deep run in these playoffs, but they can challenge the Bucks. In fact, they swept the Milwaukee Bucks in the playoffs. The team with the best record in basketball. If I'm Milwaukee, I want no part of the Miami Heat. If I'm Boston, I want no part of the Miami Heat. I don't think anyone wants to face the Miami Heat come playoff time. They could challenge some of these teams. They're very good defensively. They've got a very good head coach in Eric Spolstra. And honestly, what do the Miami Heat have to lose? They're not favored over a lot of these teams. A lot of people are counting the team out. And they could surprise some people. So, we shall see how Miami performs in these playoffs. Up next... The Denver Nuggets. I want to see how this team performs. This team is third in the Western Conference. And I get it. They've won a lot of games. But I don't believe in this team. I really don't. I think Nikola Jokic deserves our respect. He's lost a lot of weight during the quarantine period. Is Nikola Jokic going to, you know, surprise a lot of people in the playoffs? Is he going to be a guy that comes out swinging and averaging 30 points per game and just being a dominant big man? Maybe. Nikola Jokic is talented enough to do those things. Jamal Murray had a very solid playoff run last year. How will he build on that? Personally, I'm kind of out on Denver due to the fact that they're a young team. With not, I, I, they, they got some playoff experience last year, but not a lot of veterans on this team. I don't think they have a lot of star power outside of Nikola Jokic. Nikola Jokic is a good first option, but he's not James Harden. He's not Kawhi Leonard. He's not LeBron James. So... I don't quite believe in Denver, but they're an interesting team. That's won a lot of games. Let's see how they fare in the playoffs. And last but not least, let's talk about some teams that no one covers um, these days. The Pacers, the Nets, and the Jazz. These are three teams that no one really talks about. The Pacers, they've got the same record as the Philadelphia 76ers, and people keep telling me that Philadelphia can challenge these teams out east, and the Pacers have the same record as them. Really? Are you kidding me? Well, let's let's stick to Indiana. This is a team that is a that that's a very they're a very well run organization. Eight of the last nine years, the Pacers the Pacers have made the playoffs. Um, and they've actually gotten to a conference finals a couple years ago. They got to a conference finals, you know. Uh, twice within about a three-year stretch, I believe, when LeBron James was with the, was with the Miami Heat with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. 
they have not gotten over the hump, but can this team challenge someone in the playoffs, you know? I don't have high expectations for this team due to the fact that, that Victor Aldipo is not playing for this team. He's their best player, but we shall see. My Brooklyn Nets. Um, Next year is the year to really look for the Brooklyn Nets to pop with a healthy Kyrie Irving, with a healthy Kevin Durant. I don't think the Brooklyn Nets are going to win a lot of games during, the, during this playoff run and during the NBA bubble. Spencer Dinwiddie's not playing. DeAndre Jordan's not playing. And Wilson Chandler is not playing. Not to mention, like I said, Kevin Durant and Kyrie are not playing. And recently, we just fired our head coach. So, I don't have a whole lot of expectations for Brooklyn. Maybe Kyrus LeVert goes off and scores a bunch of points. But we shall see. And also, last but not least, the Jazz. Um, As far as the last team I want to talk about, you know, the Jazz are sort of an interesting team to a certain degree. You know, Donovan Mitchell is a very good underappreciated player. I think he's one of the 15 to 20 best players in basketball. Can Donovan Mitchell establish himself in the playoffs? Is he going to go out there and score like 30 points per game and really just dominate and surprise some people? Maybe. No one really talks about Donovan Mitchell. Now, I felt that the Jazz could be a sleeper team because they're very good defensively. They're well coached. They're a team that's going to grind you out and slow the game down and really bully you. You know, that, that's pretty much their style of play. Very Memphis Grizzlies-esque when Zach Randolph and Mark Gasol were on the Memphis Grizzlies. You know, Mike Conley's a good player. But now without Bojan Bajanovic, I don't have a lot of high expectations for this team. So, you know, we shall see what the Jazz present to the table. Um, Rudy Gobert is a good player, but I don't have a whole lot of expectations for this team. But yeah, maybe they can surprise some people. We shall see. So, there you have it. Those are the biggest storylines that I am most excited to follow during the 2020 NBA bubble slash playoffs. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I currently am a freshman there right now. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows. Or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out.